Hi everyone, I'm Nazrin Islam and I work as a contributing writer for ASAP Art. For the latest episode of our in-person live streaming sessions, we are at Jogunath Bhagwan Museum and Resource Center for the exhibition Twin Sisters with Cameras, curated by Sabina Kadi Hoke, Malika Liu Singer and Dr. Taputi Guha Thakurta, who we will have the pleasure of walking us through the space today. Uh, a little preface, um, as the title suggests, the exhibition is about the work of two twin sisters who were born in 1919 in West Bengal, Monogina Roy and Bimurina Bujantar, two of the earliest women photographers um, in the country. Their work has found their due platform posthumously um, uh, and due to the efforts of their family members, Joy Bimal Roy and Kamali Nimojunda, from whose collections this exhibition has actually materialized. Uh, they have grown up partly witnessing the making of and consequently preserving the archives, um, photographing the exterior and the interior worlds, the public and private, Khori uh, The sisters' images reveal a very interesting and alternative gaze in 20th century amateur photography. So, I'm going to um, let Dr. Tabati Rukuha Thakurta take over and share her insights about the exhibition. So, over to you, ma'am. So, uh, doing this exhibition has been a very unusual experience for our full team uh, because our archives has lots of our, uh, family collections. But this was about having one family collection and discovering another. So, Devolina Majumda's collection was already in our archives, so we acquired more photographs, more negatives to scan. And Monogina Roy's works came to us largely uh, from her son, but they were not a part of her archives. Now, in this world, it's the beginning wall of the exhibition. Uh, it focuses on the sisters behind the camera, but equally on the women, largely family members across time. Their generations of cousins with whom they grew up in Benares and Ramnagar. Later, their fa other family members, their daughters, and even the next generation. So I would focus perhaps on a single very striking image and maybe emphasize this notion of doubling and twinning that seems to be quite central to both twins. They're identical twins. They're growing up together, learning photography together. They often their images morph into each other and it is not very clear who is who. Now this is Debulina Mujumba. It's taken by Monopina, but there was a confusion. It could have been either. And it is in 1946, just after Debulina gets married, that Monopina takes the picture. But let me move on to these other two, which again tell you a bit on their ways in which they staged women in different identities. This is called the cleaner. It is apparently a peasant woman, but it isn't. It is one of their cousins who they got to dress up in a role with a sheaf of corn, very much took her sari off to make her appear in a skirt and a blouse like European peasant women. And so this data features again in a composition we will see. The following one is a bride. It's Monobina Roy, dressed as a bride, taken by the other sister, Devonina. And she hears, this is not a bridal photograph, she's dressed as a bride. And so we see here one of the ways in which uh, they are staging and framing their own selves Apparently, these are taken in natural light. Uh, they are candid in many ways, but they're also very carefully framed and staged each and every photograph. And this section we call women before and behind the lens. 
they talk about the comfort that women felt when there were other women taking the pictures. They contrasted it also with the travails of studio photography in those days where women would be dressed in a particular way to go to the studio setting. There's artificial light, but there's all the artificiality of pose and costume. And theirs is a resistance to this. When some of these photographs of cousins ended up in good marriages, they came to be known as auspicious photographers. But uh, the point I think that they wish to make and that we were hoping to make through this selection that was is about the different terms on which we can photograph other women of their own class, of their own family, the comfort perhaps with which this transaction takes place of that person behind the lens and that person in the photographs. So that is really something we wish to talk about a bit in terms of just making a fairly random, so this is not really chronological, these are Devodina's daughters, commonly from whom the main collection came, the later collection. These are daughter Priyadoshini. This is a sister's daughter. This again is a very interesting one of possibly taken by Vimar Roy, to whom Monovina is married. So it's not just about the sister's photographs, it's also about the sisters within a photograph. Clearly she is posing against a wooden bridge. We don't know they lived in Calcutta and in Bombay. It could be in one of their outdoor settings. And if you look at the exact, this is top left, and if you look at bottom right, she's one of them now behind the camera, is photographing her teenage daughter of Rajita against the Bombay Kuna highway. And that winding road vanishing into the horizon is as important a part of this composition as the young girl was. Similarly, with that image where Monovina appears with a cousin, the same cousin who she had dressed up as a peasant girl, this is in Lucknow. They are apparently very casually reading newspapers, but you can see that the light and the pose was something they held together till the person taking the photograph had the right light and exactly the right color. And we have to remember this is not a time when film can be wasted. So one has to very carefully choose every shot, every frame. Uh, there wasn't much scope of multiple shots that we do now. And then we take the best and we edit it. So that is. Uh, I'd like to just turn around and look at the one there instance where the sisters appear in a studio space. Uh, it is presumably taken in Bombay. By that time, one of the sisters, Monovina Roy, married to a famous filmmaker, Vina Roy, had moved to Bombay in 1951. So on the top left is Monovina with the two elder daughters, but in their identical clothes. And yesterday, Malavina Kalikar mentioned that the children look terrified. The two sisters look at you, right? They're beautifully posed. They're smiling, half smiling. It's almost as if they are dictating to the photographer how they want to be. But the children clearly look a bit astonished and scared. But their dresses are interesting. So below is Monovina, oh, sorry, Devodina with her two elder daughters, Shunaini and Fyodoshini, and above is Winky and Tatu. So this is a rare family composition which is actually taken in a studio city. As we don't have very many studio photographs here, uh, a few other appears. I think we should now chronologically now move to where the sisters began. 
which is in the princely state of Benares, whose capital was Rome. That is where the two the twins, uh, they were born in Dhaka. Uh, their mothers, uh, the maternal mother's family was there. And then when they were a few months old, they come to live in Rome. Yeah, that's, this is a nice segue into family albums as well. That they, that commonly known as that as preserved uh, and which is here for us to see as well. Okay, now this is a room uh, we like to think of as the Ram The Ram Nagar is the capital of the princely state of Kashi, Bharata uh, Prabhunarayan Singh uh, is the king, and a here is the father. Uh, father Vinod Bihari Shendro plays a central role in the education and in the training and photography of the two daughters. Devulina and Monobina have an elder sister too, on the shore, who is married off quite a while. Uh, the twins have a lot of liberty their father gives them, but also they're home educated. And their father's headmaster of the school. Their father gives them with their first father from the family of the year 12. And they begin their photography. Their father himself is an amateur photographer, a member of the Royal Photographic Society, sets up his own dark room within Pili Koti, the bungalow where they lived in Ramnagar. And this is where they sojourn with the photography today. This room has two main genres of work which we showcase the family album, the pages from the album. Uh, and then I come to the next show. So for those, let me introduce the album. So we have originals of the albums that, as you can see, they're extremely fragile. Uh, this album is important because it shows the two sisters, Nina Pina, and it gives a date. And it also speaks to the way they did not want to differentiate each other. They work together, they look like each other. It's often hard to say who's photographing whom. And the album pages are presumably mostly taken by the two sisters. When they're teenagers, they're photographing their environment, gardens, buildings, flowers, uh, landscapes, people. We have reproduced some of the album pages in the larger wall because these are obviously too fragile to display. And through the album pages, we try and reconstruct the larger family, the same roles of the others and Now, what we are looking at in the lower shelf of which the photographs are now being shown is a, another, the second genre that we wish to introduce in this. It is something called the Postal Portfolio Photographic Print. We come to know about it really through their work. Uh, in the United Provinces, where the state of Ramnagar, where the city of Ramnagar was, the Senpai families were located in different parts of the United Provinces in Ramnagar, in Benares, in Allahabad, Lucknow. Uh, Binod Bihari Shendroy, the fathers, trained in Meenat. But there's also Mukteshu, which is a place uh, they often go on holidays. The postal portfolio is how they enter a domain of public photography, where they photograph scenes label them, give them titles, they move around through postal circulation among a jury, receive comments, receive evaluations, and then are chosen to be photographed in different sites. So if you look at this wall, it tells you a bit about the postal portfolio photograph itself. 
the water and your rays be shown to the results of the photos. So we see the actual mounts and you see the cleaner reappears here, but we also here know an exhibition history of the cleaner. We know the different salons, the Lucknow University Writers Association. First photographic exhibition, 1941. Uh, portfolio circles again appears. So it's really from 1940 onwards that they seem to be engaging with the postal portfolio movement. Now it's important to see that Monokuma back then is married. In 1937, she gets married to Bimor Roy, who she meets through the larger family. He's the brother of her cousin. And that's how they meet. They meet in Mukhtesh. This is a family portrait of the Mukhtesh side of the family, Bimor Roy's side of the family, with cousins. Uh, a mashi and a mesh mashi. Uh, it's really interesting that uh, how their photographs kind of enter uh, this international camera from like what's that line where it was not so common for not at all, not at all, especially for the same that I access. So the UP, the United Province, seem to have a very active movement. We have the name of Saida, Saida, Hassan. There's a photograph of a famous history of photography in India which has a section of the postal portfolio, but it's really not been written about very much. So if we look at the photographic histories of these and they carry titles, a bold venture, this is called the Monarch, Steam, this is called Inagra Fort, it's called the Splendor that was in India. And we really are able to look at their travel histories, the same photograph. So it's not that a copy of it's the same photograph. With, so the mounts, if you look there, are all of a standard size. The photographs could vary in size. And obviously there were postal packages that everybody had to follow as they moved along. So you could say that this was a discovery. When we had the Marina Madrina's works, we knew some were labeled postal portfolio photograph exhibited in Anandwa in 1942. So we would have a label. But we had no idea what the material of to be like. And this, when Kamalini, the daughter, brought this material to us, it was a bit of a revelation on how much why we need the material object of the album and the postal portfolio. Very often, now that we all work the digital scans, digital scans can be enhanced, improved. So when you look at that, uh, what we do with the small album page, we can enlarge it. We can see people more clearly. But the material object of the album itself is a very precious one. And the same was true of the postal portfolio. And we just decided to draw a wall here, as it may have existed in an old family home, just to show it. So we have the advantage of this building, which is the resolution we can turn to the an office and execution space. So we put to advantage the furniture, which are part of this home, the bookshelf, to create the sense of the domestic space. Talking about the domestic space, maybe we can move to the of room where we will see a lot of images that both Mamina and Mamina took of their family members. Exhibition hall. Uh, in fact, this is a proper air conditioned exhibition hall uh, where we enter the sisters at a different stage in their life post marriage. So the family will tell you about briefly. 
when they get married and where they live, post marriages. Uh, so, what do we know? Values are very wonderful. We live in Calcutta from 1937 to 1951, and then Mumbai moves to Bombay, and Bombay becomes the main location. Two of her daughters are born in Calcutta, the remaining daughter and son are born in Bombay. They will become married late. In fact, between 40 and 46, she's very really active in the postal portfolio movement, partly because she still earned from the marriage. She moves with her father to the novice, to the family home after the marriage. She does a BA and an MA, and she's becoming a professional photographer when she's Now, the both sisters overlap in Calcutta between 46 and 51. Then Murugina moves to Bombay and they do other things. I think the point that I would like to emphasize, which is something uh, the curator support, is to emphasize the space of the family, the home, and the domestic setting. And to see that not as a hindrance, but as the site of their practice and their passion for food. So the home is where they allow their thoughts could emerge in the back. And children became their choice subjects. So this wall is dedicated to their children and grandchildren. The wall above, the topmost wall, is really about their children. Uh, the extreme left image is interesting. The same organ which we saw in that room, the gentleman is an organ. The same organ is here, two children, and it's possibly a, a prince sent to a salon because it carries a title like young choristers. We move through Bodokina's children, two daughters, the third daughter. You also see how pets are an integral part of their family. And the bonding between children and animals are something they are very clear on showing. So her elder daughter at zoo in Bombay. This is in the 50s. Uh, later, early 60s, we have the youngest son Joy in the back. So, so this is a mix again of works by both sisters. Uh, and the captions will tell you which work is by whom. But when you look at them without the captions, there's a way in which the families went into each other, their works, their family settings, children, grandchildren. So this is Monobina, uh, Devulina's husband and the grandson. And it's called a title called Shakha Prashak, you know, from one line. Uh, this is again Mon Devulina's two grandchildren. This is an interesting set of two compositions uh, of the sisters with their sons and their nephews. So both sisters have daughters, three daughters, and then a son. Nebulina's uh, son is called Tilok, and Nebulina's son is called Joy, and then Nebulina has a daughter. So these are Tilok and Joy, both uh, and one is a plain field, one is not. So this is Devulina, this is Monobina, but it, it could have been the other two. It's and like the concept of doubling that you talked about, it spills over into their family members. Absolutely, into composition. So when you look at a set of archers, I like to point to that. Uh, it's early, it's 1936, taken outside Burpee. And we know one of them is by the one of the seated archer. It's the same archer, so you can see both of them in similar settings, both of But even post marriage, when their settings change, the practice continues. And what's also very interesting is that the twins have children who are almost similarly aged. So the cousins are just a few years apart. The family is really close, they travel together on holidays and other 
birds. And so the children, cousins and children are all sent from the nativity. Uh, Sabina thought of the idea of a light room and an athlete uh, because they are deeply interested in the play of light and shade. Natural light, but a lot of them the photography is indoors. So when you look at, say, standing here, the one of two children standing on a portico, middle of the road, or of the boy with the cat, we see how it is natural light coming in, in at the right time of the day that they are waiting for. So try and remember how irritated they would get because they were continuously being photographed as children. And he mentioned, he said, we thought all mothers photographed children obsessively, but actually it was fairly rare to have home cameras. This is 50s and 60s. And they also realized later that they were often being used as props to get the right, right composition and words. So often you also have the same sister photographing the same child in the same way. Than her with the Monolina and Monolina lived in a place called the Gobi Gobi. And this doubling, this morphing into each other within domestic settings, I think is one very prominent theme that why we wish to give each sister an individual space. One lives longer, the Gobina lives on for that many more years. The Gobina also becomes part of professional bodies much later in the life. But I think we wish to think of them as coming to each uh, So many of the family photographs will move here. Uh, since we may be running out of time, I just end with this section, which is their coming together takes on a particular dimension when they're able to travel together to London in that year. Monovina travels more frequently because of her famous husband. She's invited to Moscow in 1959. Vimal is to be part of the jury, the International Film Festival jury. And Vimalina's son is unwell and they're seeking medical treatment in London. The two sisters meet up in London with their families. Uh, all their children are born by them. And they live in for six months, where the son is, one of the sons are being treated. They photograph children, so we will see their children appearing in the number of photographs. But they also have the opportunity for the first time, and Sabrina Manuke and Malika Rosina, my co curators, emphasize that they suddenly have the pleasure of becoming street photographers, which they did have that anonymity to do so. In is certainly not monogamy, but not even liberty. So the fact that they can walk the streets, wearing their saris, carrying their heavy cameras, photograph unknown. They're struck by women, their loneliness, elderly women, and their solitude and loneliness, equally men. So while they are looking at shop windows, so this is a wonderful instance of a friend composition where we see the gloss of a shop window, window dressing, and a woman who glances and walks by. There's almost a series of mannequins and women looking at mannequins, one animate, the other inanimate, uh, which is there. So that's a theme. Another theme is of just two people meeting, a woman meeting up upon a bench. Perhaps I can show you one or two of these photographs of the London series. So this, for instance, is a family set. So it's taken by Devolina Majumdal and it's called Truans. It's the look and joy kind of a date. It could be anywhere. We know it's London. And this is 
It's also very interesting on the titles that they would in that case. It says shortage of ice cream. So clearly, one cup is being distributed between sun and moon. But we also have the mannequins. Again, taken by two sisters. This is really striking when it's taken from, you see the back of the mannequins. And that is called a dog lover. So they're photographing people in the streets. So this wall and this section, the telling is actually devoted to that single tree. And when they become, you know, those street photographers. Uh, this is also the occasion when Monomina begins to publish the illustrated picture later. Her experiences in London. So there's an essay called A Sunday Afternoon in Hyde Park, and the photograph is in this one, uh, where they're looking both at an orator giving a speech, a black orator, talk about the racism he faces, and then they think about the local woman just sitting individually in park benches reading a book. And then at one point, the bench empties. This is a Devonina Mutumbar picture of the empty bench. And I think it very much sums up their sense of people's spaces. But eventually, compared to the sociability of the lives they had in India, the loneliness and solitude. It's really interesting that that reflexive of and altered vocabulary as well, like the changes inside the vocabulary is also like discernibly changed um, in these works. And if you think of it, it's post independence, and you have two black women in sardines walking the streets, turning the camera on the the others, but it's usually it will be Western people coming to photograph Indians. It's a very different one, and they're not doing it officially with the consumer. There's a little caption, for instance. Two ladies meet on the road in Baton just to say, what a lovely day. They're so lonely, they're just to be able to talk to someone who's a lady from 1959. Now they imagine this. But uh, it's perhaps also true in the book. On that note, thank you so much. Thank you have probably moved over time. So it was a really wonderful walk. Thank you for taking us through uh, the various vignettes in Vina Roy and Devonina Mojumba's lives. And uh, thanks to the family members, we have access to all these archives and the national archivists that they were. Um, the two sisters have also made little notes and um, accompanied their photographs with texts that um, provide very specific context to each of their works. Um, and it was really a pleasure. Um, that has more cameras, but also has the photographic books from one sister's collection, Devodina Majumda's collection. So you can see that they're reading up on photography, uh, keeping up the journals uh, there. And only one camera we have of one of the late camera, but the daughters very carefully preserved all of Devodina's. so much. We will have more live sessions coming up, so stay tuned for them. Thank you.